We've got a learner question for today from La Epumula Garden Secondary School in Pumula, HM Steen. On my right, in Putin Benjam Usbani. Tawang. Tawang Wagabando. Tawang Wagapali. Where do you live around like little castle? No, I don't know. I'm going to go to field extension 23. Ah, for Slorus. Yeah, propose. What's your favorite music, man? I heard you playing something interesting earlier on. Dubstep and heavy metal. Yeah, dubstep and heavy metal. A castle, Baba. Who could have thunk it? Welcome to the era of freedom. My man, what is your learner question for today? My learner question for today is what is a monohybrid cross? I was Sizegela Patricia. What is a monohybrid cross? That is what my man here at Pumula wants to know. Over to you in the studio. Right, what is a monohybrid cross? Now, quickly before we get into answering that question, there are four terms that I need to, need to make sure that you remember what they mean. So I'm just going to mention them and I want you to just quickly jot down a description, okay, on a piece of paper. Genotype, phenotype, homozygous and heterozygous. Okay, these are very important terms which we have looked at in the previous few weeks that you are going to need to know for this lesson. Okay, so what is a monohybrid cross? Let's have a look at this definition. A monohybrid cross is where only one hereditary trait or characteristic is investigated at a time. So we can use these crosses to investigate hereditary traits in humans or plants or animals. For example, in humans, if a mom and a dad get married and they're going to have babies, what are the chances of the baby having blue eyes? What are the chances of it having brown eyes? What are the chances of it being tall or short? In plants, what are the chances of a plant having purple flowers or white flowers? What are the chances of it having round seeds or wrinkled looking seeds? And in animals, we get things like rabbits. What are the chances of the rabbit having dark fur or white fur? What are the chances of it having red eyes or black eyes. Okay, so these are the kinds of things that we're looking at when we're talking about monohybrid crosses. So just like we use a cross to multiply, okay, multiplication, we are going to times our mom and our dad to see what offspring they may produce. Okay, are you with me? Right, so the way we go about this is we use a genetic diagram called a Punnett square. Okay, and this just makes it much, much easier for us to understand how these monohybrid crosses work. And it, it is organized in such a way that it can predict the probability of certain genetic outcomes from a given cross between organisms of known genotypes. So remember, genotypes is what the actual gene looks like, what the genetics look like. That is then shown as a phenotype, which is the physical appearance. Physical pheno, physical pheno. Okay, so guys in studio, do you know who was the father of genetics, who we call the father of genetics? Mm, it was Mendel. Mendel, okay, mm -hmm. Gregor Mendel. Mm -hmm. Very, very good, okay. And what was his famous experiment? What did he experiment with when he was coming up with all his ideas about genetics? Do you remember? He experimented with the pea plant. Yes, with the pea plant. Good. Okay, so he looked at pea plants of different heights and he wanted to know if I cross two specific pea plants, what will the outcome be? Okay, why do you think he may have been interested in this? Think about a farmer. Why would it, why would it help a farmer to know certain plants crossing together will make other certain plants? It could make bigger produce okay bigger produce better produce okay we mm -hmm. always want the biggest and the best so we can get the most money for it mm -hmm. okay so let's have a look Mendel looked at pea plants he looked at tall pea plants and he looked at dwarf or short pea plants so if you look on the screen there's a nice picture of our pea plant and um, our tall pea plant is the allele capital T where our dwarf pea plant is the allele baby T Therefore, which one is dominant? Which one is the boss? The tall one. The okay, the tall one mm. because he has the capital, he has the dominant allele. Right, so we are going to cross two pea plants to see what offspring they're going to give us. Let's have a look at the instructions. Right, we want a homozygous tall plant to be crossed with a homozygous dwarf plant. Okay, you should already have written down the definition of homozygous. That means that these plants have the same two alleles at one loci on the gene they are coding for the same characteristic so if a tall plant is homozygous we have two capital t's if a dwarf plant is homozygous we have two baby t's okay 
Right, let's have a look um, why, we, why, why we want to use this Punnett square. We want to know what is the expected outcome. If you just have a tall pea plant and a dwarf pea plant, how do you know what's going to come out after these two have been crossed? And that's what Mendel, Mendel did. He played with these and he found out that if we have a homozygous tall plant crossed with a homozygous dwarf plant, we discover that they are all tall. The offspring are all tall plants. Their phenotype is tall. Okay, now we are going to use this Punnett square to discover what the genotype is because we can't tell the genotype just by looking at a plant. Okay, right, have a look at the screen. That is our Punnett square. Okay, very easy to draw three columns, three rows. Okay, so that's what we're going to be working with. Now, there is a specific order that we have to follow when answering these Punnett squares in an exam and you need to include all of these steps or else you are going to lose marks, get lots of crosses as Amanda said. Okay, yeah. <laughs> so the first thing you need to write down P1 or the parental generation. You need to tell us both the phenotype and the genotype of the parents. So you look at the mom and you look at the dad, okay? The two that are crossing. In our example, we have a homozygous tall and a homozygous dwarf. So our phenotype is tall and dwarf, and our genotypes are big T, big T, little t, little t. Okay, it's going to make more sense when I put it into a diagram for you guys. So just absorb as much as you can as we're going along. Right, the next thing you need to do is separate these alleles and put them into the Punnett square. So across the top, you will have the, the, the homozygous tall plant, the alleles separated. And along this side, you will have the alleles of the homozygous dwarf plant. Okay. Right, it will make more sense just now, I promise. Then the next thing you need to do is common, um, calculate all the allele combinations, which is so, so easy. And then lastly, once you have found out what all these combinations are, you will then write the F1, or the filial generation. And that just basically means the first generation of offspring. Okay, you will need to write the percentage and the ratio if there is a ratio. Again, it'll make more sense just now. Right, so let's have a look at the Punnett square. There it is on your screen. So you can see the parental generation at the top, or P1. We have a tall cross a dwarf, which is the phenotype. And we have a big T, big T cross baby T, baby T, which is the genotype. Our second step tells us to separate those alleles and put them into the Punnett square. So there, in the blue blocks, we have a big T, big T, which comes from our tall plant. In the red blocks down the left-hand side, we have a baby T, baby T, which comes from our dwarf plant. Then in the yellow blocks of that Punnett square, we look at the allele at the top, we look at the allele on the left-hand side, and we kind of like do match, match the dots, okay? And we see what four combinations we can get. So if you look at your diagram again, all the combinations are big T, little t, big T, little t, big T, little t, big T, little t. Now you know that big T is dominant. So what size are all of these plants going to be? They're probably a bit long. They're going to be tall, okay, because that's what our genotype tells us. So underneath that we write our F1, or our filial generation, and we say it is going to be 100% big T, little t, that's our genotype, which means 100% tall plants, okay, phenotype. Okay, does it make sense? It's like a lot of information, but once it's in the block, it's super, super easy. Okay, Mendel then took it one step further, and he said, right, I've now got 100% heterozygous pea plants. Okay, so now the alleles are not the same, they are different. The same characteristic, but they are different, okay? The height is different, or, or the alleles coding for the height are different. Okay, so he says, what if I take these heterozygous plants and cross them together? Okay, it's not incest. So a lot of my students say, but that's gross, it's incest. Okay, it's not incest. Okay, <laughs> Just, they're not brothers and sisters, they're plants. So <laughs> let's have a look. We're going to do another Punnett square. Now this time, our step number one, our F1 becomes our P2. So our filial generation one becomes our parental generation two. So you write down the phenotype and the genotype. Then you split the alleles up into your Punnett square. You follow the dots or whatever, okay? 
organize and work out what all the possible combinations are. And then underneath that you write your F2, which is your filial generation, your second generation of offspring. Okay, let's have a look at that diagram. There it is. Right, so our P2 are tall times tall plants, but they are heterozygous. So we have big T, small T times big T, small T. We separate those alleles and we put them into the blue and the red blocks. Then we cross and we see that we have different combinations of alleles in the offspring. We have a big T, big T. We have a big T, little T. Another big T, little T and then a little t, little t. Which means in our second filial generation, we have different kinds of offspring. Some are tall homozygous, some are tall heterozygous, and some are short homozygous, okay? And then you need to write that as a ratio. So have a look at the diagram one more time. It's one to two to one, or three tall to one dwarf, or you can put it as a percentage, 75% tall to 25% dwarf. Yeah, but we as you know the format by now. Kelezanati, fun twist to education and games. And as part of the education factor of the show, we've got our second learner question for Namshanja. Like Pumula Gardens, like to zoom on Peter's sister. Hello. Hi. Kunjan. Yeah, Pila Kunjan. Ingrain, man. Australia. Who bought Wagavan? I come along with Macy. Wagon go Beni. Macy. Yes. That's an interesting name. Yeah. I'm trying to learn Macy. Bota, especially about Wagon Beni. Yeah. Ngobeni or Ngobeni? Ngobeni. Okay, go pick up. A kayak is a bush. Bush. Sure. Bush Bushpark Ridge? Yes. Ah, hey, what an educated guess I took there. Okay, let's not just win this. So, what is your learner question for today? My learner question for today is that is there any other way than a pattern square to show inheritance? Okay. Is there an, any other way than a pattern square to show inheritance? That is the question. Please help us out. Wow, okay, is there any other way than a Punnett square to show inheritance? I'm not exactly sure what Moraza and his friend were uh, chatting about. Put Putin, Putin, Putin. Punnett, <laughs> Punnett, okay, right. Yes, there is, okay, and the specific diagram that we're going to be looking at is the pedigree diagram. So again, this diagram is used sh to show a specific characteristic or trait in a generation of families okay and it's really cool because we're going back to grade one and we're going to draw circles and squares and we're going to color them in and connect them with lines okay so it's really really easy so using blocks and circles and lines you can illustrate a family tree and how a certain trait is inherited over generations okay and a lot of the time we use this to look at certain um genetic disorders, okay? Something like hemophilia, where if you cut yourself, you bleed excessively because you don't have the correct proteins to create scabbing, okay? Or in our example that we're going to use today, color blindness, okay? Mm. So let's have a look first at our rules for our pedigree diagram. Okay, where you see a square, we are talking about a male. Where you see a circle, you are talking about a female. Where you see the square or the circle is colored in, shaded, that person is affected by whatever trait we are looking at. And if you see that the square or circle is unshaded, then that person is unaffected, okay? So I like to remember it's square are males because they're nice and strong and sh like sharp edges, okay? Mm -hmm. And women are usually more curvy, mm -hmm. curvaceous, okay? So they circle, mm, nice and round and luscious, okay? Shaded in, you've got it. Not shaded in, you don't have it, okay? Right, so let's have a look at this pedigree diagram, okay? We, we can see that unshaded is unaffected, shaded, you are colorblind. And if you have the gray shading, so colored in black, you are colorblind. If you have the gray shading, you are a carrier. So that means you are not colorblind, but maybe your children will be colorblind, okay? So let's look at this diagram and see exactly who is colorblind, who's a carrier, who's married to who, who's brothers and sisters and whatever, okay? So let's have a look. There we have a colorblind male at the top left, okay? Because it's a square, sharp, he's a male, colorblind male. He marries a un or an unaffected female, okay? Nice circle, not shaded in, she's unaffected. They have two children. Let's have a look. Their first child is an unaffected male, okay? The white block underneath. Their second child is a carrier female. So she's not colorblind, she can see all the colors, but 
she's a carrier. She then goes on to marry, have a look at the diagram, an unaffected male, and they have three children. One of their children is a colorblind male. The other one is a carrier female, and the last one is an unaffected female. Okay, so that's just very, very brief, a uh, very brief look at how we can use these pedigree diagrams to follow a trait throughout a family tree. And you can see we can make certain children marry off and whatever, and you can see how after the first generation something might not come up, but after the second or third or fourth generation this may come up. And it, it's all up to genetics and chance, and that's what genetics is about, inheritance and variation. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, thank you, Kat. Kat makes it look so easy, right, guys? It is so easy. Like, uh, why did I not do life sciences back at school? You, it's so easy. But now, uh, Kat, I just want to know, this is it. You've taught us. We can't get any extra lessons now. No, Amanda. Do you really think I'd do that to you guys? <laughs> okay, guys, if you're still not sure, like I said earlier, get on to Mix It. Get Moby School. It's so great. You can have the videos in your pocket. You can show your friends. You'll know what you're talking about 24-7, lying in bed at night before you go to sleep. Watch the video again so when you wake up, you are full of life sciences knowledge.